I love this class. Mr. B is extremely passionate and dedicated about his students. My project this year is to coat cholesterol meds with platelets to make dissolved arterial plaque. project is a way to address HIV by using a protein found in B venom. He's pushing them and asking them, what are they pursuing? How is it working? What kind of support do they need? And those are very similar to what a coach does. Before coming to Greenwich High, I was a product specialist at Perkin Elmer and Itachi. So I was involved in development, I was involved in writing literature, marketing materials. It really gave me a good appreciation of all these different technologies. Ah, all right, so that title, it's got to go. go, yes. Uh, and then it, it clicked for me. Here's the opportunity to take all this background and funnel it back to get kids interested in doing some really amazing work. He brought a lot of, not only his knowledge um, in multiple areas, but he brought a lot of equipment, a lot of tools with him from his previous profession. A lot of the procedures that would normally require maybe um, working in a, in a lab setting at a university can be conducted in this ordinary chem classroom. So we have the ability to do the work here, so we kind of fast track the whole thing. Each student is expected to devise an original research plan, conduct that research independently, and then deliver that, their findings to a, a symposium or a science fair. This class is all about identifying problems, identifying the steps you can make to solve the problem. The other projects really motivate you to push forward and really uh, try and pioneer your project. It really starts from here with Mr. Vermonti and him fostering this creativity and kind of giving us the confidence to speak about our results. When I first started as headmaster, there was a student who had done extremely well, and I said, help me out here. Does Bramante give you all the, the topic and tell you to do this and do that? Is, is that how this works? He said, oh no. He said, I probably subscribe to eight different science journals. I read them all. I come in and I talk to Bramante and I say, I got this idea. I want to do this. What do you think? And that's where Andy's magic kind of takes over. Verna, how are you? You got running today or no? But Mr. B just has a way of knowing when to like step out and let us do it and when to step in and say, hey, let me help you guys out. The atmosphere here is really like, it's almost like a family. He always says that he teaches us like his peers, not really as his students. He lets the kids drive their research that they're able to do, but at the same time, he kind of helps you direct your research in a way that is best. I mean, these students work hours and hours and hours. They live down there in the lab. They're here on the weekends. I can come over vacation, and usually Andy's here with students. I want them to really drive the process, bump into roadblocks, think about new directions in face of failures. I guess the ultimate goal, but it doesn't have to be, is to get out there and articulate it to adults, and that's where the science fair part comes in. My project involves the development of a tattoo-based biosensor for the diagnosis and quantification of atherosclerosis progression within the body. So for a device that costs $15 in a time period of about 30 minutes, you can at home tell whether or not you have plaque in your arteries. That is, is huge. It's quite a, quite a great application. I mean, it, this could only come out of, of GHS science research. My project is an increased charge rate and capacity for olivine type lithium ion batteries using efficient and upcycled nanoscale electrodes. You start to deal with lithium and the reagents that are needed to work with the battery. You have to work in an environment that's free of oxygen, you know, so we had to do work in a glove box. You know, he persevered, he worked through the, the hurdles and he did a great job. My project is a portable, rapid, inexpensive test for Ebola that's based on color change that needs no refrigeration. I saw that whole process start from really just an idea. Actually responding to this Ebola issue, I mean, adults were trying to sort that out, and here's a high schooler, you know, and, and it took a fresh set of eyes to see it. I want these kids to understand that they can be part of the solution right now. We've had a number of students who have gone to the White House, I've had students who have won Intel competitions. You know, you hope as a mentor and as a teacher that they just do well and have a great experience. And then you wonder, who's going to move on? And gosh, I hope I have somebody that wins the whole thing. Our grand prize winner is Olivia Hallisey. At these fairs, he goes around with his really nice camera to take very high quality photos of us so we can all look at them and he gets emotional. You get invested. You know, you're not only invested as a teacher, but you're invested with them as a mentor with, in time and in effort. So it's, yeah, it's just a lot of fun to watch. 
You look at half of my students that are doing things that are not even related to STEM, yet the skills that they learn and how to identify a problem, look for ways to come up with a solution and then chase that down and articulate what your findings are. It's a good foundation for life.